Are you looking to learn how to create 2D, 3D storyboards and animatics using Blender and its awesome Grease Pencil tool? Then I'm very pleased to announce and share with you my new masterclass course created in collaboration with the folks at artwad.com. This way of working is becoming more prevalent in the industry and this course aims to provide a solid entry point into the processes and practices involved. The course is designed to be welcoming for many skill levels from keen beginners, curious about Blender, to seasoned veterans who already have strong storyboarding skills, but who now want to expand their storytelling toolkit with Blender. The full course is a series of pre-recorded lessons and directed assignments, packed with everything you need to make your next animatic using Blender. In module one, we begin with a story briefing and script breakdown, shot and camera language basics, then thumbnailing and beatboards to lay our foundation down in 2D first. Next, in Module 2, we move into 3D, covering all of the basics of Blender needed to create storyboards and animatics, including UI, navigation and key functions, creating cameras and ordering shots, then the powerful Grease Pencil tool for 2D drawing in 3D space, as well as a few more essentials and extras. Then, in Module 3, we begin to explore the 3D world with an emphasis on staging plans, screen direction and location scouting. In module four, we start to hone in on developing some simple scenes, exploring how to get into a scene, how to block characters and cameras in 3D, and then the 2D drawn character performance pass using both the grease pencil and draw over methods. Finally, in module five and six, we will increase the complexity, bringing all of the principles we have already learned together to develop and execute a climactic action scene, including action reference breakdowns, thumbnailing, staging and blocking, roughing, revising, and polishing the action. The course will come in two options. The full masterclass option covers everything mentioned in this video. This tier is for those of you wanting to learn how to use Blender within the fuller context of storytelling and sequence construction. The introduction to Blender option includes only the Blender module of the masterclass as a standalone purchase. This is for Blender beginners who just want to learn the basics and functions without any of the broader storytelling and process framework and who are not yet looking to commit to a full course. This course was created in close collaboration with the awesome team at artward.com. Artward believes that everyone has the potential to express themselves through art, no matter their background or experience level. It's a philosophy I really share. Their mission is to redefine art education by making it accessible, fun, and engaging for all, from passionate hobbyists to future professionals. Artward is the perfect companion to my own teaching, including this course. Why? Because they cover the foundational skills that I don't, drawing fundamentals and core design principles. Solid fundamentals are what allow us to bring our ideas to life. Artward offers a powerful platform to build those skills, all while tracking your progress through a motivating and seamless learning experience. No matter where you're starting from, improving your drawing fundamentals with Artward will unlock huge growth in your 2D, 3D storyboarding abilities. On Artward, you'll find easy to follow learning paths covering everything from drawing characters, portraits and environments to storytelling and visual design. These paths are tailored to your goals with a strong focus on essentials like spatial awareness, form, shading and composition. Getting started is simple. Just sign up, choose a path and dive in. The lessons are structured like games with fun challenges and workouts where you can track your progress, earn rewards, and learn at your own pace. You can be confident that every step in the Artward roadmap is taking you closer to your creative goals. As part of my collaboration with Artward, you can now get a special discount. Just use my link in the description below and start leveling up your fundamentals. The remainder of this video will be a kind of vertical slice edit of many small clips throughout the masterclass course. Now, even though the emphasis of this course is going to be quite firmly in the realm of 2D3 hybrid with the camera work and the staging being done in 3D, I have yet to find a more immediate instinctive process to throwing down ideas than thumbnailing. Before we start getting too technical or too specific, I want us to keep tethering these more advanced approaches like the 2d3 hybrid stuff always keep tethering that back to these core fundamentals so we take this 2d basis we go into 3d find its approximation the purpose is to then ground ourselves in the 3d and then explore and work outward before i, I go in at ground level i'll make a very broad staging plan i will figure out like where the characters are going to be at any given point in the setup before we go into any real ground level detailed staging of like character placements and interaction with one another the nice thing about a 2D view like this is it restricts your point of view to such that you think in the most clearest and simplest terms. And then 
with all of this in mind, with all the things we've thought about, we can now drop ourselves down into the 3D file to start exploring this at a more ground level. This part of the process I think of as location scouting. We have a virtual environment here and we can treat it exactly the same way as a location scout would treat a live action shoot. And we're gonna be exploring how to use 3D to enhance our storytelling and exploration. We'll cover all of the basics to get you familiar and comfortable using Blender the main inputs and shortcuts for navigation and maneuvering ourselves around the environment, how to move and keyframe objects, and how to use the world file provided. You can see the camera view on the right here. So we really have three ways of controlling the camera. We can control it in the viewport here. We can control it with these controls down here, or we can actually move it around in the environment like you would any other object. Whatever you find easier, whatever you find more comfortable, one of the most common things I get asked about with cameras is how do you make the camera always look at a certain object or in a certain direction without having to actually move the camera itself constantly? And the answer to that is something called a constraint. And there are all sorts of different types of constraint. And this one is called track two. So as you can see with this movement, it looks fairly elaborate this, but all that's actually happening is I've only got actually got four object keys on the camera, as you can see in the timeline. But because the camera is always gonna be focusing on this character in the background here, that means that regardless of where the camera is moving, it'll always be focused on that character. Let's talk about a couple of other alternative ways of creating more elaborate camera motion or more specific camera motion. So if you recall in the navigation lesson that I showed you the fly through mode and the walk mode. Well, we can actually create cameras and use that mode to record like a live, almost like a live camera fly through or, or camera run through. They tend to be a little bit rough in places, but there's ways of smoothing them out. But it's a really cool way of just getting something kind of intuitive and free flowing in the moment. It can be really great for just nice big smooth fly throughs that feel organic and also boots on the ground, rougher, kind of more visceral camera work, so those two things. Now let's take a look at the grease pencil. Grease pencil is Blender's really powerful 2D drawing tool. And the way it works is that you create an object and then you draw within that object. And so it means you can integrate this perfectly then with any 3D you've got going on. So grease pencil then becomes this incredibly powerful hybrid tool wherein within 3D space, you can draw in the environment, you can draw characters, you can animate, you can move that animation around in space. We'll begin with some simple static 2D examples first to familiarize ourselves with the main interface and UI. We'll cover brushes, materials, keying and layers, overlays and onion skin. Then we'll look into how we start to make use of the true potential of Grease Pencil, which is as an object in 3D space. Everything you need to get moving. In the project file I'll be providing, you will find these Grease Pencil characters are provided as well. So if you prefer to do your blocking of the characters with these as opposed to these 3D pegs, then feel free to do that. If you're going to be doing the Grease Pencil method of working, it's probably advisable to do that. So at least you've, you've already blocked out your Grease Pencil characters where they need to be. Later, we will expand on this with more detail using more elaborate examples. How I usually do this, I go through and I rough out, you know, the entire rough of a thing. And then what I do is I duplicate that layer so that I've got all the keys in the same place on an empty layer, which I then use for cleanup. So I'm gonna go again, I'm gonna duplicate this, but I'm gonna do it with a full copy this time. So what this does is instead of with linked scene, every single object is linked in this, none of them will be. So this is a fresh full copy, right? So I'm gonna go full copy, and this will now be called number two. So I'm gonna change stuff here, and nothing I change here now should happen in the other version. I'm gonna go back now to that previous version. You see, they haven't changed. So that then allows you the option of either radically changing the layout of things, or even just subtly changing the layout of things. This can also be really handy for Grease pencil in particular. So you've got your timeline at the bottom, you've got all your channels, and this is the viewport in which your video preview is gonna play. You can either just drag and drop from an open Windows browser, and you can just press play and it'll play the whole number of clips you've got. And then you can do various things to the strip, you know, drag the in and out points of each clip, cut the clip here, and now it's in two pieces. 
Let's now move into the blocking part of the process. One example will be using the drawover technique for the characters, and the other example will be using the grease pencil 2D in 3D technique for the characters. We can compare then what each of those approaches gets us so that you can decide on how and when you would like to employ either of them. With the character peg blocking playing out on loop in the scene, I can drop down to a first person perspective and I can walk around this now. I can watch this action play out in real time while we move around. It's kind of like watching actors rehearsing on a set. So this is the equivalent of a director being on set with the actors. You're watching the blocking you've agreed on and then you think, actually, no, I need you to stand over there a little bit more or I need to come in a little slower there. The reveal and then a very, very broad staging view of what's happening down there. Even on simpler shots like this, having the characters in space and me filming them meant that as I started performing them in 2D, I could still adjust and react and add simpler camera motions to complement the action. In order for our action to work, we need to understand how and where it fits within the story and what it needs to achieve. The three act and six stage structure can actually be applied to any individual scene too, including action scenes. Even though act two is the smallest here on the script, it is by far the most work for us to do as storyboard artists. It is the area that needs the most expanding on by the board artists own ideas. This is very typical of scripts. When you get into action, the descriptions tend to only give you enough to get going and then you have to expand outward from that. Taking everything we have learned, explored and established in our thumbnailing pass, our script and reference breakdowns and our previous staging lessons, we now want to apply all of that to the section of action that we have chosen to develop. This is where we now transfer all of that into the 3D space to further explore possibilities, ideas, focusing entirely here on the spatial thinking, staging and blocking of the action of our characters and the camera coverage of that blocking. The 180 and the screen direction needs extra special attention as we will be moving around the environment a lot. And so how we need to maintain clarity and consistency across the whole action that will need an extra layer of care and attention as well. I'm going to drop down into the walk mode so that I can explore this now from the level of the characters and see what we've got to play with. What does this space feel like? What are the opportunities that it can provide us with? Getting a sense for how our characters feel in that space, how they feel in relation to one another spatially, just really kind of immersing myself in this moment now. Before the character blocking, I have two views of the same blocking. On the left, the more localized view, so we can see the characters moving around the environment. On the right, we have that bird's eye view of the whole arena, so you can see how much everyone moves around. The camera will be orbiting around here, framing Artemis, until we get towards the end of the framing and then the focus wants to shift onto Wodan. That end framing of shot one takes us into the next shot. So the focal point of where I end Wodan on the first shot needs to hook up to roughly where he is on the second shot. This helps keep our eye where we want it to be. You can see like how much of this relies on you playing this out in your imagination, right? During this blocking phase. The next pass is the roughing out of the characters across the scene to build upon that base structure with the specifics of the characters' actions and performance. This is now all about the execution of those characters as they move and act their way through the scene, building upon that potential that we've already set up with our staging and blocking. We already have the shot choices, so now it's all about focusing on the expression of those characters and action in 2D. It's a combination of action choreography, full body physical motion, and the emotional performance of the characters and how we connect all those things and keep the energy and movement and flow going across the shots. Drawings can be as rough as you like. With your Ma, we get his characteristics and movement. Then we hand over and in comes Vedak and you can see immediately the difference in the way they move. That's what you're looking for when you're looking to make those characters immediately distinct from one another. We now move into the final part of the process of this module, clean up and polish. Now we're in something as complex as action. I want to go more in depth with this now so that we can really take this action scene that we've done to a nice finished professional level. For the ogre, 
I first focused on that very wide shot, cleaning his full body and face up to get that extra value gain I talked about to clearly establish his full look here. Then I mainly focused on the head and shoulders really thoroughly across the entire scene, making sure his face is readable and the expressions are defined and clear at whatever distance I am viewing him. One specific plus up I did is the shot of them running up to the altar. When I first blocked that out, it still didn't have much energy. So I just pushed the camera a bit further here. I started it further back and pushed it further in. So it made it go faster using Ian Hubert's free camera shakeify add-on that I showed in the 3D lesson to really lay in that organic handheld feel across the scene. I went through and dialed that in across all the shots, carefully choosing when and where I wanted the camera to be more subtle or extreme in its shape. So that's a little vertical slice taste of the masterclass course there. So hopefully from this and the other information available on Gumroad, like the lesson descriptions and things like that, you'll be able to see exactly what's in each of these formats and decide which one is right for you at the moment. You may be absolutely up for the masterclass right now, in which case come along and grab that bull by the horns. But if you think you're in the market just for that introduction to Blender, all of the how to, where the buttons are, where the functions are, with, without any of the broader storytelling and full process application, then the intro to Blender for storyboarding will suit you very well. But the masterclass is where all the real meat is. It's about then how we apply these techniques to tell stories, to construct sequences, to take our storytelling into this full 2D, 3D hybrid process. I really hope you enjoy the course and can get as much out of it as I put into it.